Hi, this is Kim White with the My Sexy Business Team. I'm here at the Hope to Hope Conference, and let me tell you about these two. <laughs> <laughs> I am here with my co-host, Christy Bridges from One Moment Wiser. And my cohort in crime, <laughs> Connie Myers, Crystal Light Moments Publishing. Right. I'm telling you, this, this is a princess trio that you really want to um, not miss any of the craziness because if there's bloopers, we may delete the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long day. It has been an amazing day. It's been a fun day. We have had such a good time at the Hope to Hope Conference. Tomorrow is the last day. <laughs> <laughs> Today was, I'm, I'm in awe. To, what, to, we should start by talking about what happened at the beginning of the day. Well, why don't you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen uh, Kim White flustered very often. <laughs> but this morning, she was here early and it was all prepared and ready to go online. And Three and hours early. Three hours early, and then all of a sudden, just as we're supposed to go live, <laughs> at the stroke of nine, at the stroke of nine, nine, the computer dies. It says, please wait, updating now. Zero percent, two percent, 25 percent, zero percent. So she had she had one of those little um, things you put your phone on, and she's squeezing it because she's trying not to get mad. But that choke it out. <laughs> And then, but to add to all that frustration, not only like that is going on, we we lost internet. We lost internet right at nine. We lost the computer right at nine, and we lost the app that we're using to do these interviews <laughs> all right at nine o'clock. And I'm like, really? And then on top of that, I want everybody to make sure you see my yellow stain down the front of my shirt. <laughs> and Christy, <laughs> and Christy kicked over a giant cup of coffee under us. So all at nine o'clock. All at nine o'clock. <laughs> Away by nine o'clock. You know, being early doesn't always mean you're successful. <laughs> being flexible that means you're successful. Exactly. Oh my goodness, these two. <laughs> so this morning we actually started off a session this morning about um, are you our next speaker? Yeah. Like that's kind of the name of the the thing that we were doing because everybody has a story. Everyone has something that they've been through in their life, but if they tell that, they can encourage somebody else. And we are encouraging you to do that. To find your hope to hope story. Even if you only tell, you know, someone in your family, or even if you only tell, you know, one person, it's worth the effort. But I'm believing there are people out there that will be our future speakers on Hope to Hope. They will have their own tale to tell. And I think that's really important. And I see one of them that better, like, hey, hey nephew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Lewis Cole is actually one of those ones that needs to get his story together because he is going places. And we are we are loving watching that. But Christy yeah. gave a class this morning. Uh, well, a summary. A little summary. workshop. A workshop. Just to help you get started on writing your story. So if you missed it, go back and do that. Yeah. Right? And look at the comments because the steps are in the comments. But listen to it, too, because you'll get some ideas for your own story. You have a story. Even if you think you're boring or even if you think, oh, I'm not a writer, it doesn't matter. Start telling that story. And, and, and you want to start telling your story because we have these things happen in our lives because we're supposed to pass them on. Yeah. That's, there's always an opportunity to share with somebody, and it could be a, just another person, or it could be with everybody on Hope to Hope, or it could be that maybe you've got a story to tell that you haven't finished the answer, you haven't caught the conclusion, and maybe there was somebody on Hope to Hope that might be able to help you. Mm -hmm. So share your stories, even if it's just with one other person, because you're going to make a difference. Yes. yes. And you know, make sure you share your story, because you never know who's in the house. She's about here. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> so I think that that's really important advice that we gave, which is to tell your story. Mm -hmm. Now, session number two was, and I am like so <laughs> tired. I'm so sorry. It Wait, was that was Meg. Meg. That was my friend Meg Weinkopf, who is, I tell you what, I know, Meg, if you're listening, that you're going into ecclesiastical leadership. 
but I will vote for you someday. <laughs> I've told these girls, Meg is is a president I'd love to have. So, you know, just throw just that saying. out there. <laughs> just saying. Meg, you did such a fine job. Yeah. And if you didn't watch Meg, you need to go back. She went through a lot of stuff that she did not get into um, very deeply on the interview, but she's got a lot more details. She's got a lot more underlying um, damage that happened in her life. Things that were hard and the restoration. She came through. Yes, I don't know how I don't know how old Meg is, but I, I was really impressed with the fact that she has just started on her. Uh, PhD for yeah. ecclesial leadership, leadership, organizational leadership, organizational leadership. That's right, and uh, that that's taking on something you know that I think is, I, she, yeah, I think she could run for a lot of things. And she has already started several businesses. She's a coach, a good coach, and she has um, the Faithful Leader is her most recent business that I just I think is is coming off the ground with flying colors, but she also is not all about herself. And and we love people, love people who are giving back purposefully, even as they're creating something that will sustain themselves, yeah. they're looking to serve others in their businesses and in their side endeavors. And she is really at heart for fighting sex trafficking and rescuing, rehabilitating those who've been involved in that. She has a, a run coming up. Actually, it's on my birthday, October 14th. Nice. <laughs> so guess where I'm going to be? Yeah. Um, it's going to be, it's called Walk for Freedom. Mm -hmm. And I was looking online about it. It's in, it's in 300 locations and there's several countries as well as throughout the United States. Yeah. And what was interesting is they all walk in a single line with uh, tape, black tape over their mouth and they all wear black. To uh, to really make a statement about how this has to end about the voice mail. We make judgments based on what we see in movies, and that particular lifestyle is not always a choice, and it uh, it's damaging. So I'm I'm it's totally going to be with you, walking for freedom. I, I think it's one of the the most horrific things that is happening in this country. I I represent some organizations in Las Vegas because it's a huge problem there mm -hmm. and the stories are just horrific. Yeah, I'm sure it is a huge problem there. That would be. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Well, okay. We just have had some real power people today, just people who are actively changing the world. And I love that. Actually, yeah. all week, I there has not been a day that I haven't been able to say that. I just yeah. love it. Oh, yeah. So who did we have next? Your friend. Yes. Yes. Um, Oh, I can't think of her name now. Um, <laughs> I'm having. Oh, Angela Stanley. Angela Stanley. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh, Angela, she was so fun. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> With her dinosaur noises. She has. She has the <laughs> vulnerable warrior. Yes. And yes. what a story she had to tell. Here's the thing heartbreaking about story. Angela is. You now you look at her and she's got her stuff together, and you look at her That's and amazing. think on the outside. You know, you look and think she's never been through anything. You know, she's spoiled or she's this or she's perfect. And the truth is she went through a lot from the time she was really little. She went through a lot of things. Um, she survived basically domestic violence and the murder of her mother. Mm -hmm. She has survived, not just survived. I don't really like that word. No, I, she she more than survived. Yeah. She's, she kicked it by it. I mean, she really yeah, yeah. is a living testimony to you don't have to stay stuck. Yes. Don't stay stuck. There's yes. no excuse for it. And she is such a, she's actually, it's kind of humorous now because it, we didn't start out this way. We met at a conference and, and I just loved her. But exactly. not only are we, you know, um, colleagues, I guess would be the right word. She spanked me earlier in a different group than this conference and was so right I felt like when her mouth opened, I came out. Like, I, <laughs> that's what I spanked them with. And she's spanking me, and I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> You've had a couple of people giving her her own advice. Yeah. Yeah. Her own advice today. I love that. I love it. You know, it's, it's amazing when you have people that are truly givers and truly want to help other people and truly want to make people better. 
not, oh, you didn't do that right. Right. But really helping because she's helped with some things behind the scenes. And I love you, Angela. <laughs> we love you, Angela. She just was a light of the day. Well, I don't know. I She was definitely one of many. <laughs> we, I'm <laughs> kind of of uh, understatement. There's so many good speakers you today. Know. Very slow. Yeah. Then we had um, Rip. <gasps> oh. Rip came on. Rip and Kastar. We never did ask, but I think it's Kastaris. Uh, it's either Kastaris or Kastari, but he's amazing. And profound. <laughs> he's an artist who thinks and has so much understanding. And we just had fun, just kind of letting him talk. We just kind of sat back and went. Yeah. <laughs> great, great wisdom. Yeah, yeah, you can make us be quiet. You really are. Right? <laughs> right now he's in the middle of a project at a Greek Orthodox church where he's painting a mural on the ceiling. Yeah. It's Ukrainian, actually. Oh, it's Ukrainian. It is. He's Greek Orthodox, but the, the icons are similar. Uh -huh. And he said even the services are kind of similar. But it's so neat to see this gorgeous cathedral that they've built. Um, even from the outside, it's amazing. But on the inside, he said they've been working on this cathedral for 32 years. And guys, I guarantee that this church doesn't spend all their money just making the place pretty. They help a lot of immigrants and people, but they are aware that art and the passion that comes with it should be used to, to bring glory to our creator. We, we are creative because we were created by a genius. And I love it. I think one of my favorite parts he said though was so, so adorable. I asked him how he had started painting and he talked about being in kindergarten and he figured out that he could paint and he wouldn't have to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that because, you know, napping is just, you know, for the faint of heart. <laughs> and, and if you're five or, you know, six or whatever age it is, for kindergarten, and you can get out taking a nap by painting, and now look at him painting. And later, on, <laughs> later on, he had another teacher who who needed to get a slide presentation made so he could get out of his homework if he helped her with <laughs> <laughs> getting the illustrations done. And you know, he was no slacker though. Even in college, he he knew he had to actually do some studying, and so he didn't care what grade level the classes were. He asked his friends, "What really stirred you?" So that he could take classes that would keep his interest and his passion, and and he has used that passion in lots of, of artistic ways now. It's just amazing. There, there's there's links on his um in on his interview to some of the artwork that he's done to his gallery on his website, yes. and and a video about this latest project. So and check, check out, out the St. Louis mural. Oh my it gosh, is it's just beautiful. He's got lots of stuff on his page to connect with him too, because you will enjoy, if nothing else, looking through the beautiful oh, pieces. Yeah. And then we had Martin. Elena. Oh, Elena. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we're related. I don't know how that works since she was born in Russia, but I'm pretty sure that we're related because I was listening to her <laughs> and laughing because she stole she, all your lines. She's a friend of Miss Connie's and Miss Connie has been telling me since she met her, you've got to meet her. She says this, you know, the same stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. Today, I was telling her the same thing. I was telling Elena, I go, you've got to meet Kim. You've got to meet Kim. So when she got on, she goes, oh, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a blast with her. She did so amazing at talking about stuff. She actually um, talked about following your passion and actually living now instead of later. Mm -hmm. She talked about starting um, a business that I – I'm telling you, that's going to be one of my all-time favorite stories ever. She started a business because her friend called. She was coming to America, and she needed a job. And so she didn't have a job for her. She didn't want to work for her. She said she'd do anything for her. She would give it to her. The friend did. Mm -hmm. And so she had to create a company so that she could hire her friend so her friend would take a check <laughs> and be able to have a job. This company in two years went yeah. from zero dollars to $90,000 a month cleaning houses. They have no, no commercial property except for a couple that happen to be house cleaning clients. 
And I love her philosophy. Yeah. If, the, if the client wants you to just come in and talk with them, then you go in and you just talk with them. Whatever they need. Whatever they, it is that they need, that's what they do. She says it's not the number job. one cleaning. It's a making happy. Yes. Company. It's the number one cleaning service in all of Las Vegas. Cleaning yeah. houses, not office buildings. Is that that's huge. Tracy? That, that's like huge. And then, because that wasn't enough, <laughs> she went on and talked about she wanted um, something for energy and, and she needed an energy drink, but she didn't, and she gave the kind of the reasons of why she, she couldn't find anything that she was looking for. So being the princess that she is, she went out and on Facebook, I'm telling you, everybody that thinks I'm crazy for the Facebook. Thank you, <laughs> Facebook networking. <laughs> She went out on Facebook and asked if anybody knew a food scientist so that she could create her own drink. And guess what? She found one on Facebook. I, I can't wait to try it. it. It's called Mommy Go, and it's coming out. She's, um, I, I'm just, I'm in awe of her because of the thing that she had them create and put together, um, she wanted it to look good. She wanted it to taste good. And she wanted it to give energy without having like the jittery stuff from like yeah, the caffeine effects. and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and they did it. They they've yeah. got it and it's it's available. So if you It's called Mommy Go. If you want a pickup, you know, pick me up drink and you don't want the ones that kind of give you and if you want, she described what was it she said she said about that? She says, um she made a comment about that it's not like the, the other energy drinks. I can't remember what it was. No, it was it's not harsh energy, but, you know, harsh she energy. described an experience. She had been in France, and there was a line down the street, and she said, what is this line for? I'm getting in it. And she ended up at a bakery where they had these little tiny um, eclairs. eclairs. And she was like, and they were not cheap. She tasted one, and she was like, I've never had dessert until now. And she wanted to make that same kind of um, exhilarating experience for, well, not just for moms, but for everybody, um, to be able to not just give them energy, but actually give them an experience. And the flavors she has described, I, I'm just like, yeah, we can't wait. thinking about it. We can't wait. Miss Tony's going to get hers first, and I think that's wrong. But you know, <laughs> but you know what she did for me? She broke my thermostat. You know, we have this, this, I'll go this far and then I'll give up thermostat in us. Everybody's set differently. But at the end of her interview, she told about saving the lives of 100 kids who were inevitably going to die painfully if somebody didn't do something and she heard no 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 and she had a lot of people go oh we'll pray for you but no not gonna help and and so she just had to keep pushing forward because she couldn't imagine living 40 more years of her life knowing the 100 kids weren't able to and this and is a specific group of kids she like shattered my thermostat yeah. because how often do we go gosh well there's nothing more i can do Every door that was closed in her face, she would just go back. <laughs> and she, and she would go above. And she would, she would say, above. this is just not acceptable. Yeah. not This is not acceptable. So smash your thermostat. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cute, though, because she she got fired up. And, and she actually was talking about something that we talk about all the time that everybody doesn't get a handle on because they're so afraid that they're going to be taken advantage of. And that is the collaboration. She had some some of the people, they were really gifted and talented at something, but they had no clue how to raise money. And so they would go in and they would try to do that and they'd mess everything up because they weren't doing what they were good at. And so she made a deal with them that you go do the thing you're good at and I'll raise the money. <laughs> like, I can't save 100 kids, but I can raise money and you can save 100 kids. Let's, let's do what we're good at. It was really, yeah. really good. And then we have one of my sweet friends, Aww. one of my dear, dear friends, Martin Maynard on. Um, Martin is somebody that is just, he has gone from being shy, which he shouldn't have been because I'm telling you, he, he's he got such a powerful message to tell the world. Um, he was abused as a child, and I'm not telling secrets. These are things that he's, he's openly he said. said. Yeah. 
Um, but he was abused as a child in horrific ways. And I look at him and I think there are very few men that stand up and will say that because we've taught our boys to, you know, to suck it up and, and not cry and not talk about that stuff. And the truth is there are a lot of men out there that have been damaged and hurt and abused that need to be able to use their voice, need to be able to tell their story. And he is one of those, oh, he'll just be my friend forever. He may not like me forever, but, you know. (laughs) Very strong. Oh, my goodness. He did a great job of talking about um, he actually lost um, his daughter to SIDS. And, you know, they still don't understand what that even is. Yeah. Like, we don't even know how to cope with that. It, it's like an unknown killer. And so he talked about that and the relationship him and his wife went through and the difficulties. And um, he's just, he's incredible. He's a distinguished Toastmaster, which is the highest ranking Toastmaster. And he's gone on to do incredible things. He's the senior I called him the wrong thing. He's the senior <laughs> designer designer um, for a major electric company. Um, he just, he's incredible, but he has such a tender heart. That's the one thing that I want you to like really know about him. He's so tender hearted. So if you have, if you're a man, like most of this conference has, because I am a woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. I have a lot of women in my circle. I have some men too, but, most of the speakers have been women. I want to encourage you, if you're a man out there and you've lost a child, you know, go go reach out to Martin. Martin's very, very kind about he will happily, you know. Well, he was talking about how uh, after they lost his daughter that he felt he had to be the strong one. So he didn't have any outlet for his grief and how and he didn't know how to deal with his grief because he was trying to be strong for his wife and his family. And that's a very difficult thing. Very difficult. And he's got such a way of being able to articulate, you know, and explain those things. So please do reach out. And then the last session was with these three crazy princesses. (laughs) (laughs) I am telling you, we are so blessed because this, this has been amazing. We don't want to like wear you all out because if you have been watching all of them, there are a lot of hours of video, but I I can't tell you the grand total. I haven't gotten it for today, but I'm talking thousands and thousands of people have already gotten on and we appreciate you, we appreciate yeah, you much. so much. You. The reason that we're here, the reason that we're here is for you. Like the reason that we do this is to, facilitate access, opportunity and access for you to be able to reach out to people that can change your lives. And I believe everybody that has been on the Hope to Hope and everybody coming up, I believe every one of them are world changers. So if you are going through a rough time, if you have been through a rough time, please connect. Please connect with this group of people. I think there's there's a word you use that I've been hashtagging all along (laughs) called broken open. Mm -hmm. I mean, each and every one of the people who have been on here in one way or another Mm -hmm. have been broken open. And that just means you open your heart, you open your soul. And it's all about giving because when you Mm -hmm. give, first of all, it makes you feel awfully good. And second of all, you really do make a difference in somebody else's life. And that light just sprays all over the room. I love it. Yeah. Well, broken open changes your capacity. Like the capacity that you have to care about another human being is actually enlarged when you are broken open by a loss or a hurt or an abuse or whatever it is. None of those things we want to happen. We don't want those things to happen, but they do cause us to be enlarged in our capacity to love and care about other people if we allow it. So I think Alina was a, when she was saying that, you know, she, she didn't really ask to try and help these hundred kids, it, but she couldn't live with herself. She didn't help them. Yeah. And she was broken open by the fact she kept trying to give them away to somebody else to, to be <laughs> responsible. Yeah. But uh, she was broken open so that she did step in and she made a difference in those hundred kids. Lives. So we're going to be back tomorrow. Yeah. We 
have another full day tomorrow and the, the fourth day of the Hope to Hope conference for March 2018. Yeah. It's hard to believe that it's it, it's almost like no, don't say it. <laughs> it's, no, getting, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's getting closer. I'll say that. It's getting closer. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please get on a message. Please message our speakers, message us, whatever, whoever you need to connect with. Don't stay isolated. And don't try to do life alone because it's so much better together. I'm Kim White with the My Sexy Business team. I'm Christy Bridges with One Moment Wiser. And I'm Connie Myers with Crystal and Moment Publishing. All right. And we will see you tomorrow on the Hope to Hope Conference. Love Bye. you guys.